And welcome, brothers and sisters. Welcome to our first fruits gathering here in Parable Living Year. Today, we're going to discuss what this day is all about. Uh, we'll be celebrating it together and as we discuss its application for our time. So, uh, welcome. Let's do a quick prayer and we'll get right into it. Uh, Heavenly Father, Yahuwah Most High, we just come before you in Yahusha's name. And what a day uh, today is, a day to, to celebrate uh, the resurrection of Messiah Yahusha and to celebrate it your way, the way that your scriptures have deemed it to be done not mixing with the ways of the world. We thank you so much for calling us unto belief uh, in your son, Messiah Yahusha, and to bring us back by his blood and his offering. And we just thank you so much for opening our eyes to the goodness of your Torah. And we just pray that you continue to cultivate our heart that we understand that we may walk straight on the, the narrow path and neither deviate to the left or to the right. And um, just continue to work on us, Abba, that we may, may remove e every element of the world and continue to put on Messiah Yahusha and to walk as he walked. And we bless you and uh, we just thank you for this day of first fruits in Yahusha's name. Amen. So... Yes, brothers and sisters, Messiah Yahusha has risen indeed, uh, the Savior of the world, the spotless Lamb. Uh, you know, by His blood, we are reconciled back to the Father, um, our King of Kings, our Adon, and He is the only way back to the Father. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father but through Him. So praise be to Him. Uh, quite frankly, just to get to the point, this day is all about Him at this point. Um, but we're definitely gonna, we're going to talk quickly about... Uh, uh, why we're not doing Easter, uh, why we shouldn't mix with the ways of the world. We're not going to spend a whole lot of time on that because I think a lot of you already have an idea, but just in case somebody new happens to uh, drop in on this video live or as a recording uh, so that they can hear the word for themselves and then not just hear what they think maybe people may be just complaining, oh, you know, Easter's pagan and, you know, whatever. Anyways, so, um, but before we do, you know, uh, for those of you that was, was hanging out with me before we actually got started, um, you know, the song of Mo in the song of Moshe, we hear, Your right hand, O Yahuwah, has become great in power. Your right hand, O Yahuwah, has crushed the enemy. And, we, you know, Yahusha has many, many titles. He's the, the word of Elohim. He's the only begotten. He's the spotless lamb. He's the king of kings. He's the, uh, the Adon, Adonai. Um, but he is also... Uh, the right hand of, of Yahuwah, and uh, he truly has crushed the enemy. He has become great in power. He has crushed the enemy, and, you know, honestly, that was prophesied since the very beginning that uh, Yahusha would crush the head of the enemy, and he that he would overcome death, and he, by doing so, he became the first fruits of the resurrection. Hallelujah, Yahuwah. This is our hope, brothers and sisters, truly, because no matter what happens to us in this life, uh, they can take away freedoms, they can take away even our life, but we know that this life isn't it because we have this hope in this resurrection of Messiah Yahusha. And um, so no matter what, they can't take that from us, right? So praise be to him. So while the world is celebrating a, a mixing of the ways with the world, let us return back to the Father's way, the path that Yahusha, our King, um, the true first fruits gave to us. So let's talk briefly about what Yahuwah thinks about mixing with the ways of the world. So let me uh, get switched over here uh, to a screen share and we will get started. We're going to start with Deuteronomy 12:29. All right. Deuteronomy 12.29 states, <clears throat> and you're going to see these titles here. Um, I've just, I, I found it the easiest to go to Bible Gateway. As you can see, I can just line up a ton of scriptures here. So forgive me, uh, but I will be saying the set apart names uh, and true restored names as we read through. Deuteronomy 12.29-31 says, When Yahuwah your Elohim shall cut off the nations before, from before you, whether you go to possess them and you succeed them and dwellest in their land, take heed, right? So like be careful, take heed to yourself that you be not snared by following them after that they be destroyed from before you and that you inquire not after their gods saying, how did these nations serve their gods? Even so will I do likewise. So, you know, this still has a, an aspect for this. While this is saying that when we go into the land to possess it. Now, remember, in a spiritual sense, Yahuwah has saved us by the blood of the Lamb and taken us out of spiritual Egypt. And we are now like in the wilderness of the people, if you will. This is our time of testing, our time of proving, our time of, uh, of refinement. 
And, you know, just uh, just like he said, you know, uh, this is a test whether you're going to keep my commandments or not. So same thing for us. This definitely applies for us today. Now, uh, as we're going to talk about a little bit about tonight, uh, t- today, you know, we are still in dispersion. We are still uh, in captivity. We have not been regathered. So are we going to be able to keep every aspect of every feast day perfectly? No. Uh, you know, was Daniel in Babylon able to keep everything perfectly? The scripture really doesn't say, but we can only imagine that he probably wasn't able to keep everything perfectly but you know what he did keep perfectly? His heart. And he probably kept it perfectly, uh, not probably, he kept it perfectly from keeping the ways of Babylon. And uh, we know that happened because uh, he was thrown into the lion's den for not obeying uh, that command. And same thing with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Um, I don't know why I always call them the Babylonian names. Uh, uh, Azariah, um, Mishael, and... Um, oh, no. <laughs> uh, oh, no. <laughs> Oh no, I'm on the spot here. I, I, uh, Azariah, Mishael, in. Oh man, I'm gonna have to go to the, uh, the, the, the chat here. Somebody help me out. Anyways, man, I feel really, I feel really horrible. But let's get back on track here. Um, so how do these nations serve their gods? Even so will I do likewise. You shall not do so unto Yahweh your Elohim, for every abomination to Yahuwah which he hateth, have they done unto their gods, for even their sons and their daughters they have burnt into the fire to their gods. So uh, this part right here doesn't necessarily um, 100% apply to uh, what the tradition of Easter has done to this true holiday, uh, this true feast day set apart unto Yahuwah, but um, certainly, um, here we go, somebody, somebody help me out here. Hananiah, thank you. Oh man, oh man, sorry. Okay. Deuteronomy 18, 9 through 14. When you are come to the land which Yahweh your Elohim gives you, you shall not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that uses divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto Yahuwah, and because of these abominations, Yahuwah your Elohim does drive them out from before you. You shall be perfect with Yahuwah, your Elohim. So in this manner, we are to be perfect. You know, he wants us to be perfect, period, right? But in this in this specific manner, we should be perfect, and we should not be mixing with the ways of the world. For these nations which you shall possess hearken unto observers of times and unto diviners, but as for you, Yahuwah, your Elohim, has not suffered you to do so. So um, some of the traditions with Easter, you know, it, it include, it's, I mean, I don't even, shouldn't even say that name Easter because it's associated with um, the, the names of the gods of other nations, which I'm not even going to utter that name. I've, I've been learning to obey the commandment in Exodus and not even utter their names, um, especially with the eggs and the fertility and the painting. Listen, that's all nonsense. And I know a lot of us grew up with that. But it's nonsense, and we've got to come out of it. Uh, I know a lot of you already know this, so we're going to go quickly through this, and we're going to move on to uh, the good stuff about today. Um, but we got to, we have to say, uh, we have to tell it like it is sometimes. Leviticus 18, 1 through 3, And Yahuwah spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, I am Yahuwah your Elohim. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein you dwelt, shall you not do. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, whither I bring you, you shall not do. Neither walk in their ordinances. Their ordinances, this is like their laws, their ways, their traditions, if you will. Jeremiah 16, 19, O Yahuwah, my strength and my fortress and my refuge in the day of affliction, the Gentiles, the nation shall come unto you from the ends of the earth and shall say, surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanity, and things wherein there is no profit. And certainly this is true for us. Almost everything, not almost everything, a lot of things that we learned about the faith was false. Exodus 32, 1 through 5, And the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, and the people gathered themselves unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods which shall go before us. For as this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what has become of him. We're like, we don't know what's become of him, right? And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons, and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. And all the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them unto Aaron. 
And he received them at their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool after he had made it a molten calf. And they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Right? Now here's here's the kicker. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made a proclamation saying and said, Tomorrow is a feast to Yahuwah. So they were so, these um, Israelites are so used to the ways of Egypt, right? That they went back, they went right back to what they what they knew, and uh, you can see here that they were trying to praise Yahuwah in this way of abomination, which was to to fashion this calf. So, you know, we can certainly liken celebrating the the days of the world, the feast days of the world, the holidays of the world, if you will, that mixes a little bit of Yahuwah's ways and a little bit of pagan ways. And as we see here, just like with this golden calf, it is an abomination to Yahuwah. Two more sections of scriptures and we're going to move on. Matthew 15, 7 through 9, You hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Right, so you've got a lot of people that confess Messiah, that confess uh, the Father, confess His ways, right? But their heart is far from me, and we know that uh, loving Him with all of our heart, soul, and mind, we do that by keeping His Torah. Period. Any other way is a man-made tradition, but in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men, and this is as rampant as it was 2,000 years ago when Messiah came on the scene. Mark 7, 6 through 9 says, And he answered and said to them, Well has Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. How be it in vain? And you can see here that he's likening their hearts being far from them because what? How be, it, how be it in vain they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Nothing new under the sun, brothers and sisters. This is absolutely rampant today. For laying aside the commandment of Elohim, you hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other things like you do. And he said unto them, Full well you reject the commandment of Elohim that you may keep your own tradition. And that is exactly what uh, most of the world is celebrating today. So let's move on now to, uh, so we're past that. We're past the uh, getting out of the pagan uh, traditions. So let us celebrate first fruits the right way. Um, and so let's go back, all the way back to how this was first commanded back in Leviticus 23, 9 through 14. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Yashrael, and say unto them, When ye come into the land which I give unto you, and ye shall reap the harvest thereof, then ye shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest. And he shall wave the sheaf before Yahuwah to be accepted for you on the morrow after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. This is where there's a lot of uh, debate as to what day this actually falls on. Um, and I got to be honest with you, I see, um, I see, I see it from both sides. I really do. Um, so, you know, I'm doing it today to in honor of doing it the best way I understand how to do it. But uh, going back, so what they did in the in the days, so uh, this was the barley harvest. The barley was the the first uh, to mature uh, in in the harvests and. Um, so what they do is they take a, a bunch of it, right, tied up together. They bring it to the priest, and you know the priest shall wave it before uh, Yahuwah, and it was an offering unto him. And uh, you know, in an ag agricultural society, which none of most of us are not used to, <laughs> they relied solely on you know the crop harvest, which you know essentially we do too as well. But we're so far removed from a agricultural society, we're so used to just going to the market and picking it up, and we don't even think about what goes into um, getting that together for us. But in an agricultural a true agricultural society, which they were, uh, they relied on the crop harvests, and this was an outward expression of gratitude to uh, to Yahweh, right? But uh, going back to how do we get there, uh, it says, um, on the morrow after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. So there is some debate as, as to this Sabbath, is it the weekly Sabbath like we had yesterday, or is it the Sabbath uh, of uh, the day after uh, or the the first day of unleavened bread, which it actually, if you look at the if you look at the uh, the the verbiage, it actually doesn't call. Um, you know, actually, I can actually just back up a little bit and we can read it for ourselves. Um, 
Here we go. And on the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread unto Yahuwah. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. In the first day you shall have a holy convocation. You shall do no, no servile work. So by implication, this is like a Sabbath, right? You do no servile work, but it is not actually called a Sabbath. So there's where the kind of debate uh, is uh, is there. So um, I'm doing it based off of the, the morrow after the Sabbath, uh, which was yesterday. So that's why we're doing it today. Um, it's the best that I understand at this point. I am definitely willing to be swayed uh, back to the other way, which basically puts it at Nissan 16. Uh, so uh, every year. So uh, and today we're at uh, um, or yeah, more on the 18th. So anyways, uh, let's uh, keep going here. And you shall offer that day when you weigh the sheaf and a he lamb without blemish of the first year for a burnt offering unto Yahuwah. And the meat offering thereof shall be two tenths deals of fine flour mingled with oil, an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah for a sweet savor. And the drink offering thereof shall be of wine, the fourth part of an hint. So you've got the lamb, you've got the flour, right? You've got the, uh, the um, grain, and you've got the wine. A full offering here. And ye shall eat neither bread, nor parched corn, nor ear, no green ears, until the sales, self same day that ye have brought an offering unto your Elohim. It shall be a statute forever throughout your ge uh, generations and all your dwellings. So a little bit later, we're going to talk about uh, how we can personally uh, celebrate and, and maybe give this offering, but we'll uh, we'll uh, get there in just a bit. So, um, so one other thing to consider as far as the, the timing of this, here we see this is uh, the time of Joshua, chapter 5, verses 10 through 12. And the children of Israel encamped in Gilgal and kept the Passover on the 14th day of the month at even in the plains of Jericho. And they did eat of the old corn, right? Because we just read it here, you're not supposed to eat of the new corn. Uh, they ate of the old corn on the land on the morrow after the Passover, unleavened cakes and parched corn in the self same day. And the manna ceased on the morrow after they had eaten of the old corn of the land. Neither had the children of Israel manna anymore, but they did eat of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. So here's a nice little foreshadow of uh, an application of first fruits in the time of Joshua, Yahusha. So how it was celebrated, we're going to read a little bit from Deuteronomy 26, 1 through 10. And it shall be when you are coming to the land. So as you can see here, this is how it's you know, a little hard for us to really uh, do this the right way because we're not in the land of our inheritance. We are still in dispersion uh, and we don't have a working temple with a working priesthood. So um, well, let's just, uh, for historical purposes, let's take a look at how they did it. And it shall be when you are coming to the land which Yahweh your Elohim giveth you for an inheritance and possessest it and dwellest therein, that you shall take of the first of all the fruit of the earth, which you shall bring of thy land that Yahweh your Elohim gives you, and shall put it in a basket, and you shall go into the place which Yahweh your Elohim shall choose to place his name there. And you shall go unto the priest that shall be in those days, and shall say unto him, I profess this day unto Yahuwah your Elohim that I am come into the country which Yahuwah swear unto our fathers for to give us. And the priest shall take the basket out of thine hand and set it down before the altar of Yahuwah your Elohim. And which, by the way, I didn't pull it up uh, right now. And just to keep kind of this gathering short, um, you know, there is, in Jubilees, I don't remember the exact chapter, but in Jubilees, it very specifically says that Abraham kept the first fruit celebration. Um, so we can see that this was actually kept before um, the, the giving of the Torah on Mount Sinai. And some would even venture to say that the offering of Cain and Abel uh, was a day of first fruits as well. So something to consider. So they're bringing all the first fruits, they're bringing in a basket, and you shall speak and say before Yahweh El Elohim, a Syrian, this is talking about Abraham, a Syrian ready to perish was my father, and he went down into Egypt and sojourned there with a few, and became there a great nation, mighty and populous. And, or actually, no, forgive me on that. And the Egyptians evil entreated us and afflicted us and laid upon us hard bondage. And when we cried unto Yahuwah 
Eloheinu of our fathers, Yahuwah heard our voice and looked on our affliction and our labor and our oppression, and Yahuwah brought us forth out of Egypt with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm and with great terribleness and with signs and with wonders, and he brought us into this place and hath given us this land, even a land that floweth with milk and honey, and now behold, I have brought the first fruits of the land which you, O Yahuwah, has given me, and you shall set it before Yahuwah your Elohim and worship before Yahuwah your Elohim. So, um, truly, we can, again, be thankful for everything that Yahuwah has provided for us. Even though we're in dispersion, uh, we, you know, we have it good in a lot of ways here. Now, things are quickly changing around us, but nevertheless, um, you know, we, we, yeah, for most of us, we don't lack any bread. We don't lack any food. Uh, we don't lack a roof over our heads. And I know there's some out there that may be starting to struggle, and this is going to really kind of tie into, um, just an idea that uh, I prayed about, you know, as to how we can give an offering in these last days um, without a, again, without a working temple and uh, with still being in dispersion. So just some things to consider. Uh, so let's turn now to the true meaning, the, the with all this foreshadow, which was Messiah Yahusha, our true first fruits. So, <clears throat> Uh, Matthew 1, 23 through 25, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is Elohim with us. Then Yosef, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of Yahuwah had bidden him and took unto him his wife and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son and called his name Yahusha. Some say Yeshua, Yahusha. Uh, we're good. We're totally good. Uh, but he is the firstborn, as we're going to see. Uh, Colossians 1.15, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. We're going to see how this firstborn uh, relates into this first fruits. Uh, Revelation 1.5, and from Yahusha HaMashiach, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Oh man, this is what it's all about, brothers and sisters. Romans 8, 29, For whom he did foreknow, he did also predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So like he is a prototype for many to follow after him, right? both in spirit and in truth and in the resurrection. 1 Corinthians 15, 20 through 23, But now is Messiah risen from the dead. Hallelujah! And become the first fruits of them that sleep. All right? So Messiah literally is the first fruits. He's the first offering unto Yahuwah uh, in the, uh, the being uh, raised up from the grave. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Messiah shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Messiah the first fruits, afterward, they that are messiahs at his coming amen that is our great hope brothers and sisters that is what we are looking forward to now as it may relate to some of us uh if we be found uh, worthy and ready revelation 14 1 through 5 and i looked and lo a lamb stood on mount sion and with him in 144,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads and i heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters and as the voice of a great thunder and i heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps and they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elder elders which by the way as it were as it were a new song we'll talk, talk about that song in a little bit or those two songs actually um uh, before the four beasts and the elders and no man could learn that song but the 144,000 which were redeemed from the earth these are they which were not defiled with women and I do believe that this is the um, a spiritual uh, purity from being away from the you know the doctrines and in fleeing Egypt fleeing Babylon if you will the whole book of Revelation is about two women the faithful woman and the unfaithful woman and we are not defiled with the unfaithful woman uh, the one that uh, has committed abominations before Yahuwah and has turned away and turned aside to go a whoring after the world in her ways for they are virgins these are they which follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth right so he blazed that that path uh, of of uh, faith and um 
obedience to the Torah and uh, hallelujah in these last days he's woken up a group of people that is following him whithersoever he goes these were redeemed from among men being the first fruits unto Elohim and to the lamb and in their mouth was found no guile for they were without fault before the throne why because they have uh, the um they have put on the garments uh, of salvation. They have put on the eternal garments. They have been fully forgiven. They are placed before Messiah, uh, placed before Yahuwah as first fruits, blameless as virgins, having no guile in their mouth and being without fault before the throne. Amen. So now to tie it all together, right? First John three two three two through three. It's you know it's hard to imagine that we would be like Yahusha because you know. He's the word and he was with Elohim since the beginning, but this is the promise to us right here. Beloved, now are we the sons of Elohim and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. That is like probably the best verse I've read in a long time. I mean, we we're going to be we're going to be like him if we be found worthy, if we keep his ways, if we hold fast to this truth, if we overcome until the very end. We shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure. He is Kodesh. He is set apart. So we are to be set apart, right? Set apart from the world, separate from her ways. Amen to that. So Messiah, Yahusha, is the first fruits. He was the first crop to mature, just like the barley is the first crop to mature. We mature afterwards, and we will be a first fruits if we be found worthy as well. And don't forget, in Revelation, don't fear, right? In Revelation uh, chapter 7, um, it says that the great multitude also comes with the 144,000. It's the same time. Uh, but uh, we'll actually talk more about that uh, in our weekly studies as we get further into Revelation. So um, with, uh, let's see, with that being said, I want to share actually a couple other things. And we're actually going to wrap this up. I wanted this to be kind of a quick gathering. Um, we're going to look at Genesis uh, 22. I thought that I had this ready. Yes, I did. Okay. Genesis 22. Here's an interesting foreshadow from Abraham's time. And it came to pass after these things that Elohim did tempt Avraham and said unto him, Avraham. And he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah. This is actually the place of the Temple Mount. This is the place where... Um, David bought the threshing floor from the Jebusites. Uh, this is where Messiah Yahusha was uh, was crucified. And this is actually where uh, Abraham also took Isaac, as we'll see. Get thee into the land of Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And Avraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took his took two of his young men with him and Yitzchak his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place which Yahuwah had told him. Then on the third day, which we know that Messiah Yahusha rose on the third day, right? Just like uh, when the Israelites were gathered around uh, the uh, Mount Sinai, they were told to wash their robes, stay ready, Come not at your wives and be ready for the third day. So then on the third day, Avraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Avraham said to his young men, Abide here with the ass, and the lad will go yonder and worship and come to you again. And Avraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it, laid it upon Isaac, his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. And as we know, the story continues that, of course, um, uh, Yahuwah uh, stayed the hand of uh, Avraham and said, you know, no, 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 you know, I will provide. And uh, we know that uh, Messiah Yahusha uh, eventually became that uh, perfect sacrifice, that perfect offering. So uh, praise be to him and hallelujah forevermore. So, um, you know, so how can we, let's, uh, let's switch gears for a little bit. So how can we offer a first fruit today? Again, we don't have a working temple. We don't have a working priesthood, so we really can't, you know, wave a, a sheaf a sheaf offering um, before him. We do have Yahusha in the heavens, of course, as our high priest, eternal high priest, and praise to to be to Yahuwah for him. Um, but you know, in how can we take it in kind of a literal sense today? You know, honestly, take it to Yahuwah yourself. Uh, I can just merely offer a suggestion. Honestly, um, you know, first and foremost, this is we we should. We should praise Yahusha every day, but even more so today. 
uh, you know, perhaps let this day encourage you to share your testimony. Um, I might just share just a quick testimony with you guys to maybe give you a short example. Um, but, uh, you know, maybe because uh, we know that Yahuwah provides everything that we have. We know that we're not in an agricultural society, but he does give us provisions, um, money to get the things that we need. We know that um, people are losing their jobs left and right to what's going on uh, with, with what's going on in the world. Um, so, you know, maybe this is a time to look out for our brothers and sisters and to help them. I don't want a penny, okay? Do not give me a penny for first fruits. I don't want it. I'm not, I'm not a priest. Um, and quite frankly, uh, thanks to what you guys already do for me, I have everything that I need. So I don't, I don't need any first fruit offerings. Do not give me a penny. Please don't do it. Uh, but find somebody out there that may need it. And by the way, thank you, by the way, for all of you that do support this ministry. Thank you so much. We have everything we need please. Uh, thank you. Uh, but find somebody out there that is maybe needy. Um, maybe find somebody out there. You know, there's a lot for those of you that are on Facebook. I know not everybody's on Facebook, so this doesn't apply to you, but those of you that are on Facebook, you know, maybe look out for, uh, for somebody that's, um, that's, you know, need some help. I don't know. Pray about it. Pray that Yahuwah puts somebody in your path, uh, you know, maybe today, maybe tomorrow that uh, you could give to somebody because it was about giving a portion of your increase what yahuwah gave to them so maybe in this sense we can do something similar um this is just from me praying and thinking about it and, and wondering how we can do this um so this may not ring true to you you may be like adam just lost it fine no big deal this is just merely a suggestion but take everything to yahuwah especially this uh, as to how we can you know how we can offer something uh, to him and thanking him and giving it to somebody maybe in need out there. So um, just something to consider. But, you know, again, while the world is celebrating Easter, let's let's show our light. Because Messiah said, let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And our good works is the works of the Torah. Now, now when let me just also say this. Um, as far as your giving to the needy, be silent about it. Don't tell any about it. Keep it to yourself. That's a different kind of work. That's a um, that's the kind of work that Yahusha told us not to sound a trumpet before men to be like, oh, look at me. I gave such and such to somebody. Zip it. Just like when you fast, zip it. You don't need to go around, to, oh, I'm fasting. Oh, have pity on me. No. He said, wash your face and go about and do your business, right? Um, same thing with, with uh, if you guys do decide to give to the needy or just think about that in general. Don't ever uh, boast about it. Don't ever anything. Just keep it to yourself and and, and do what Yahweh has called you to do. Um, but as for you know your good works of the Torah, that is something that should be uh, outwardly shown. It's it's I know it's a kind of a, a fine line there like like well they're both good works you know why should we show one and not the other well you can just only follow Messiah's example and uh, when he had the example of giving um, you know that was something he said uh -uh. so anyways um, you know quick testimony you know I uh, I was born and, and raised in a uh, in a in a Jewish family um, a pretty wealthy family and I had a really good upbringing and I went to a Jewish private school uh, was raised in that way I thought everything was great uh, I had a pretty really good childhood I'm not gonna lie to you I had a really good childhood and um, around 10 or 11 maybe 11 actually it's probably 11 or 12 uh, I was really close to getting ready for the uh, bar mitzvah thing uh, my parents divorced and um, I went to live with my mother my mother my mother and uh, things kind of went downhill from there. Uh, she was a single mother. She worked really hard. She worked very hard. Um, she was a uh, uh, MRI technician and she worked and it was really early in that stages. She had, uh, she was one of the first to get trained in it in the eighties. And um, anyway, so she worked a lot. So I was at home by myself a lot, just playing a lot of video games, watching a lot of TV, just being raised by the world. Uh, she tried really hard, but you know, w without a male influence there. So I kind of went astray and, um, Especially going into uh, actually, um, I was pretty. I was, I said astray, just astray from from Elohim. Uh, I still was pretty a pretty decent kid. Um, I wasn't a baby goat. I was a decent child. Um, even through high school, I was pretty decent. I did have some mess ups here and there, but uh, went into the Marine Corps. Nine Eleven happened. Went into the Marine Corps. Um, did a lot of good things, but also learned a lot of bad habits. Uh, I became a terrible, terrible drinker, partier, uh, reviler. Um, 
I broke almost every single commandment, and and I'm not saying that boasting. I'm saying that like in complete, uh, in complete humility, in that I was a horrible sinner, and I was very selfish, cared about myself only, and um, it showed in the fruits of my life. And got I got to a point where I was at an extreme low in my life, and I thought about suicide. Uh, and I call, finally called, I finally remembered to call out to Yahuwah. It's, there's like a passage in Deuteronomy. It says, you know, even in the latter days, if you if you call upon me with all of your heart and soul and mind, you know, I will uh, hearken unto you and I'll forgive you. I'm, I'm loosely quoting it, but um, that's essentially what happened is after my riotous life as the prodigal son, literally spending um, everything I had on whatever I wanted to do, uh, I called upon him and he called me back into his word and to reading his word and to cleaning up my life through the power of the, the Holy Spirit, the Ruach. And so um, fast forward, you know, like seven years to where I am today in um, beautiful family. Um, he's given me a ministry, which is the joy of my life and um, the ability to meet a lot of you, brothers and sisters. So I'm here to say that by the power of what Messiah Yahusha did for me, for you, for all of us on the cross or the stake, whatever you want to call it. Sorry, I know some people are offended by by that. I don't I don't know exactly what it was, but maybe it was a stake, maybe it was a cross, but that's not the point. What he did for us, um, his offering for us and becoming our first fruits, um, re- cleaned me out from the inside sent me running back to the Father and back to the Word. And, uh, you know, I'm here to be, to to thank Him publicly and just give you my short testimony. Um, it's nothing fancy. It's not a fancy testimony. Um, um, you know, nothing really special about my life um, until, you know, just uh, just recently. Um, and, and all the understanding that He's been giving us and coming back to His Torah um, and being able to be a true son, um, the, the prodigal son story really rings true to me. Um, coming back to him, it's like you know, with what I've done, how could I, how could I be worthy of, uh, you know, coming back to you? You know, I'll, I'll just be a, I'll be a doorman, I'll be a, a laborer, I'll be just be a, you know, a nobody, whatever. Um, but you know, just please take me back, and uh, he did, and I'm just really here to, to say I'm very thankful, and. Um, you know, maybe uh, you brothers and sisters on uh, on this day of first fruits, maybe you can reflect of how thankful we should be about what He's done for us, and um, you know that might be a sweet savor before Yahuwah, uh, a true testimony, uh, and sharing it with our brothers and sisters. So maybe alongside uh, giving to somebody out there in need, uh, maybe that could be a physical offering, but maybe in our hearts and um, in our maybe with what we confess with our mouth that. Um, you know, what Messiah has truly done for us and um, brought us back to his Torah and understanding what freedom truly looks like, which is his Torah. So um, I'm here to publicly say that Yahusha HaMashiach, who I knew as Jesus, you know, when I call him, no lie, when I called him upon him, I I knew him as Jesus, you know, and uh, eventually he, uh, he showed me the truth of his name and how important his name was. And so, you know, we learn, we learn and we grow. So uh, we should never have a hardened heart to refuse being repro- reproved, um, corrected. And it says in the book of Proverbs that a wise man um, uh, can take a rebuke and a wise man would learn instruction. Hey, Bobby, I'm, uh, I'm still recording. Or I'm, actually, I'm actually live right now. And you don't have your shirt on, so I can't let you say hi to everybody. Yeah, I'll give you a snack in a few minutes. We're almost done. If you can go inside and... Huh? Give me just a few minutes, Bobby. Look, Daddy's, Daddy's live with people right now. Here, you want to just say hi really quickly? Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> oh. Let me say hi, everybody. Oh, he's sad. Okay, baby, I'll be inside in just a few minutes. Okay, just a few minutes. We're almost done, and I'll get you a snack. Okay. Almost done. Actually, brothers and sisters, give me just a second. I'm going to help Daniel out. Give me just a moment. Uh, Two minutes. If you're watching this as a recording, probably fast forward two minutes.
<laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, it's supposed to be nap time. And Daniel uh, woke back up and I guess wants a snack. So I apologize about the delay. Uh, but here, I'm back. <laughs> All right. So um, in any case, just uh, getting back to the point. Uh, could be a great day for a testimony. I want to read a few more scriptures and then we're going to end tonight. So uh, let's get this up. And we should be good to go. And by the way, as far as um, as far as a quick, easy Easter teaching, uh, comparing first fruits with Easter and some of its kind of uh, end time applications. Uh, by the way, you can always take a look at the re- recommended channel list, and Torah family is right here. And take a look at his videos. This right here was actually a really good video. I shared it on the community tab here. But uh, check a look at what Steve Mucha um, had to say, what Yahweh gave him to say uh, in regards to Easter and the end times. So uh, pretty interesting there. So let's uh, get back into some scriptures and we'll uh, finish up tonight. So Proverbs 3, 9 through 10. Honor Yahuwah with your substance and with the first fruits of all your produce. Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with wine. I mean, so again, in, in thinking about how we can offer a first fruits offering out there, uh, pray about it, see what Yahuwah wants you to do. But um, a mere suggestion for me would be to uh, find somebody in need. So let's read a passage here from 2 Esdras. Um in honor of the resurrection, in honor of good works, in honor of uh, maybe what's to come for for those that may be found ready. Two Ezra uh, was in the 1611 K, uh, KJV, uh, was removed in the 1800s with the dispensational movement. So starting at verse 15, 15, Mother, embrace your sons, bring them up with gladness, as does the dove. Establish their feet because I have chosen you, says Yahuwah. And I will raise up the dead from their places and will bring them out from their tombs because I recognize my name in them. I think that's twofold. Not only is it recognizing his name, but actually doing his deeds is honoring his name. Do not fear, mother of uh, of the sons, for I have chosen you, says Yahuwah. I will send you help, my servants, Isaiah, Yeshua, and Jeremiah, Jeremiah, uh, which these two books seem to be kind of the most important books for understanding these end times, even more so than Revelation. According to their counsel, I have consecrated and prepared for you, uh, maybe not more important than Revelation, but maybe these three books together, I think, are some of the most important. According to their counsel, I have consecrated and prepared for you 12 trees loaded with various fruits and the same number of springs flowing with milk and honey and seven mighty mountains on which roses and lilies grow. By these, I will fill your children with joy. Guard the rights of the widow. Secure justice for the fatherless, give to the needy, right? This is what we're talking about. Defend the orphan, clothe the naked, care for the injured and the weak. Do not ridicule a lame man, protect the maimed and let the blind man have a vision of my splendor. Protect the old within your walls. When you find any who are dead, commit them to the grave and mark it. And I will give you the first place in my resurrection. Pause and be quiet, my people, because your rest will come. Good good nurse, nourish your sons and strengthen their feet. Not one of the servants whom I have given you will perish, for I will require them from among your number. Do not be anxious, for when the day of tribulation and anguish comes, others... Oops, others shall weep and be sorrowful, but you shall rejoice and have abundance. The nation shall envy you, but they shall not be able to do anything against you, says Yahuwah. My hands will cover you so that your sons may not see Gehenna. Rejoice, O mother, with your sons, because I will deliver you, says Yahuwah. Remember your sons that sleep, because I will bring them out of the hiding places of the earth and will show mercy to them, for I am merciful, says Yahuwah El Shaddai. Embrace your sons until I come and proclaim mercy to them because my springs run over and my grace will not fail. I, Ezra, received a command from Yahuwah on Mount Horeb to go to Israel. When I came to them, they rejected and refused, rejected me and refused Yahuwah's commandment. Therefore, I say to you, O nations that hear and understand, await your shepherd, our firstfruits. He will give you everlasting rest because he who will come at the end of the age is close at hand. Be ready for the rewards of the kingdom because the eternal light will shine upon you forevermore. Flee from the shadow of this age. Receive the joy of your glory. I publicly call on my Savior to witness. Here we go. We're publicly calling on our Savior, right? Receive what Yahweh has entrusted to you and be joyful, giving thanks to him who has called you to heavenly kingdoms. 
Amen. Can we not be even more thankful, right? Rise and stand and see at the feast of Yahuwah the number of those who have been sealed. This actually ties into first fruits because we saw that uh, in in uh, Revelation 14 that the uh, 144,000 were the first fruits and they were sealed. Those who have departed from the shadow of this age have received glorious garments from Yahuwah. Take again your full number, O Zion, and conclude the list of your people who are clothed in white, who have what? Fulfilled the Torah of Yahuwah. The number of your children whom you desired is full, the fullness of the Gentiles, the fullness of the nations. Beseech Yahuwah's power that your people who have been called from the beginning may be made holy. I, Ezra, saw on Mount Zion a great multitude which I could not number. They were all praising Yahuwah with songs, which we're going to do to end tonight. In their midst was a young man of great stature, taller than any of the others, and on the head of each of them he placed a crown. Amen. But he was more exalted than they, and I was held spellbound. Then I asked the angel, Who are these, my lord? He answered and said to me, These are they who have put off mortal clothing and have put on the immortal, and they have confessed the name of Elohim. This is what my suggestion is, right? Is let's confess Messiah today. Let's give people our short testimony today. Now they are being crowned and receive palms. Then I said to the angel, Who is that young man who places crowns on them and puts palms in their hands? He answered and said to me, he is the son of Elohim, whom they confessed in the world. This is our duty, brothers and sisters, confessing Messiah Yahusha, our first fruits, and what he did for us. So I began to praise those who had stood valiantly for the name of Yahuwah. Amen. Um, amen, amen. And I actually uh, want to just do a quick little portion here. Uh, Revelation 5. So there's two songs in Revelation 15. Those that I have given that were victorious and overcame, they sing two songs: the song of Moshe, which we're going to end this with, and the song of the Lamb, which we'll actually read through right now. Uh, and I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, our Passover lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of Elohim sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. So the lamb, Yahusha, took the book out of the hand of Yahuwah. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. And they sung a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For you were slain and has redeemed us to Elohim. By thy blood, out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and has made us unto our Elohim kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth. And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and as such are as in the sea and all that there are in them heard I saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sit upon, sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that lived forever and ever. And uh, last but not least, and Yahusha, and from Yahusha HaMashiach, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Amen. And hath made us kings and priests unto Elohim and his father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters, that's going to conclude our little gathering today. I pray that it was a blessing to you. I pray that maybe you might have learned uh, a little something about uh, first fruits. Remember, to, let's proclaim Messiah Yahusha. He is risen, and the victory that he has given us uh, by coming out of Egypt, coming out of her ways, and we're going to honor him with that, with the song of Moshe. So I pray that uh, you have a blessed day, and um, well, how many times can I say hallelujah in one stream? I don't know, but I'm going to say it one more time. Hallelujah, Yahuwah, Song of Moshe. Have a blessed uh, first fruits, brothers and sisters. And uh, don't forget to uh, uh, meditate and ask Yahuwah what he wants you to do uh, for this blessed day. So, uh, shalom.
I sing to Yahuwah, for he is highly exalted. The horse and its rider he has thrown into the sea. Yah is my strength and song, and he has become my deliverance. He is my El and I praise him, Elohim of my Father. And I exalt him. Yahuwah is a man of battle. Yahuwah is his name. He has cast Pharaoh's chariots and his army into the sea. And his chosen officers are drowned in the sea of reeds. The depths covered them. They went down to the bottom like a stone. Your right hand, O oh Yahuwah, has become great in power. Your right hand, O oh Yahuwah, has crushed the enemy. And in the greatness of your excellence, you pulled down those who rose up against you. You sent forth your wrath. It consumes them like stubble And with the wind of your nostrils The waters were heaped up The floods stood like a wall The depths became stiff In the heart of the sea The enemy said, I pursue, I overtake I divide the spoil, my being is satisfied on them. I draw out my sword, my hand destroys them. You blew with your wind, the sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who is like you? Yahuwah, among the mighty ones Who is like you, great in Kodesha Awesome in praises, working wonders You stretched out your right hand, the earth swallowed them In your kindness, you led the people whom you have redeemed in your strength, you guided them to your Kodesh dwelling. Peoples heard, they trembled. Anguish gripped the inhabitants of Pelasheth. Then the chiefs of Edom were troubled, the mighty men of Moab. Trembling grips them, all the inhabitants of Canaan. Melted Fear and dread fell on them By the greatness of your arm They are as silent as a stone Until your people pass over O oh, Yahuwah Until the people whom you have bought Pass over You bring them in and plant them In the mountain of your inheritance In the place, O oh, Yahuwah Which you have made for your own dwelling The meek dash, O oh, Yahuwah Which your hands have prepared Yahuwah reigns forever and ever Yevarechecha Yahuwah ve Yishberecha Ya'er Yahuwah panav elecha ve khnuneka 
Yisa Yahwa Panav Elecha Veyashem Lecha Shalom. Yahweh bless you and keep you. Yahweh make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Yahweh lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom, brothers and sisters.